Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Afrobeats Germany. My name is Samson Onoja Itodo. And today is a special one because we have a very special discourse today. We'll be talking about the Nigerian Island Trade and Investment Summit. And I'm very, very honored to have with me a special guest today, the ambassador of Nigeria to Ireland, Her Excellency, Mrs. Obiezu Ijoma Chinonyerem. Welcome uh, to this special time. Thank you for taking the time to, to share this moment with me. Thank you very much, Mr. Samson. Thanks for having me. So, Ma, please can you tell us a bit about yourself? If I have left something out in this introduction, I probably have left one title or something else. So just a brief introduction of yourself properly, Ma. Well, uh, you've made the introduction. And what is important based on what uh, we are discussing is I'm the ambassador of Nigeria to Ireland and Iceland. And um, the essence of this uh, conference meeting is to talk about the Nigerian Island Trade and Investment Summits, which will be coming up on uh, 30th of uh, June to 2nd of July this year. And the theme is, um, prospering together through trade and investments. Um, as the name depicts, is a trade and investment summit where Nigerians, um, government of Nigeria and the business community of Nigeria will come to meet with their Irish counterparts, you know, to see ways of uh, further deepening the bilateral relations which exist already and is very cordial, um, is mutual, we are looking for ways of strengthening it and to also give um, uh, the, the, the private sector, which is the business community of both countries, you know, um, some, some, some level of uh, ease of doing their business across border. But please, can you kindly tell our audience hmm. about the enormity and the opportunity this event availed to both countries, both Nigeria and Ireland? Yes, the opportunity, like you asked, is quite enormous. Um, we are looking for um, ways of further deepening the relation in the areas of uh, agriculture. Like I said, it's a trade and investment summit in the areas of agriculture, aviation, education, um, gas and oil, mining, and uh, of course, ICT and others. Um, and uh, uh, fortunate enough, both countries, uh, they have similar things uh, in common. You can't talk about uh, education in Ireland without making mention of Nigerian students. That is not possible. And uh, in the areas of uh, agriculture, God has blessed Nigeria enormously, you know, with, uh, with, with, with the necessary uh, facilities for agriculture and Ireland on, on, on her own is doing very well in agriculture, you know, in, in its ramification. So we are looking for ways of uh, um, partnership, cooperation, and uh, seeing ways of, for instance, in agriculture, in the areas of agriculture, um, we can, our business community meeting with that of the Irish community can, can look for ways of partnership in terms of, uh, preservation and packaging of our agro products. Because uh, if, you, if you agree with me, Nigeria as a nation, we produce more than we can eat. But the problem has always been how the preservation of the products. And of course, when, when you preserve it, you may have more than enough to consume and you'll be looking for ways of exporting them. And that is where this partnership will benefit both countries the most. So yes, we have so many areas we can partner together. So we are bringing it on board on one table to look at them. And then the government of Nigeria and Ireland working together in those areas to see where the MOUs and the, you know, the, 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 the official and technical aspect of it will take place to give, like I said, our business communities a soft landing across border. What actually instigated this? What do you see? What, what, what happened and then what led to your mind shifting to this and say, okay, this is supposed to happen now and this is the right moment? 
Well, uh, if you ask me, there, there are no right moments. You keep walking. And uh, because there is a, an already established relation, bilateral relation, like I said, was dated, uh, you know, uh, uh, dated back as far back as uh, uh, post uh, independence of Nigeria. The Irish government had been cooperating with Nigeria in, the, in, in that area. And looking at, well, in particular, um, just after Brexit, you know, Ireland is the only uh, English speaking country in Europe now. And again, after COVID, you know, the COVID of 18 is a global, it was a global challenge. It's still a challenge. Um, it crippled so many things, you know, economically and otherwise, social life, economic life, uh, uh, economy of countries. So opening this up at a time like this is a, is a way of bringing back, you know, the consciousness that this relations could be further deepened, you know, to benefit both countries economically and otherwise. So I think that that is the essence of it. And coming on board, I am a few months here now, about 11 months plus uh, in my duty. Uh, coming on board, I see that, there, that it has taken years that this kind of uh, summit was put together by the um, embassy of Nigeria, um, Dublin Island. So there is every need, even where the such uh, relations exist to review it to further deepen them and to bring everybody on board to see ways of further strengthening this relation. So it's very, very important at this moment. But uh, is there any particular sector of uh, each of both countries' uh, economy or that you're looking at that is going to be, uh, this is going to be more beneficial or it's going to make more gains from this summit? Well, in, in the, there is no particular one, but if you, if you ask me for a particular one, uh, I may end up mentioning <laughs> one or two or even three of them because uh, the opportunities are bound, like I said, and they, uh, they are enormous. Um, especially in the areas of agriculture, I've made mention of that. On the part of Nigeria, we need to partner, we need to collaborate, you know, um, to see how we can preserve and of course export at the same time because we have enough to eat and to export the rest. But if you don't preserve it, you can't be talking about exporting what is left of what, you know, Nigerians can consume. Uh, so on both sides, they can partner together on the, in the areas of agro products, uh, ICT, you and I know that our youths are doing tremendously well in the areas of, you know, ICT. So we can share ideas, we can exchange ideas. And Ireland uh, being the only English speaking country in Europe now uh, is, a, is, a, is, a, is to a great extent is a, a tax heaven, you know, for, for investors. So if we can partner with them in the areas of ICT, our youths, both sides will benefit from that uh, wealth of knowledge. And uh, of course, aviation too. Um, if I want to go to Nigeria now, I will have to go either through uh, UK, Germany or Turkey. Meanwhile, I think it's the same distance that you have taken us from Ireland here to Nigeria that it will take us from UK and every other place. Uh, so if there is a direct flight and we we'll make uh, the, 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 the island, you know, um, an, 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 an aviation or flights hub, you know, for connecting flights and all that, that will benefit Nigeria and Ireland enough economically speaking. And of course, it will also expand our cultural appreciation, you know, between both countries, because uh, the essence of relation is people to people relation. So if we establish that there is a direct connection between the Irish people and Nigerian people. But as it is right now, what is the trade balance within both countries right now? Who is, if you, where, where is the scale tipping in, in terms of trade? as it is at the moment? Yes, I know this question will come up. Uh, <laughs> as, a, as a last year, as a last year, I don't talk about any other uh, time, but I know it has been consistent. Um, it, the, uh, it's lopsided uh, to the benefit of the Irish government. The, the trade uh, but is not balanced at all. There is deficits, though it is not uh, the fault of the Irish government because there is nothing that we have uh, brought forward as to 
exchange trade and investment that they have turned down. And that is the essence of this summit also to, to put things on the table, to streamline things so that there will be balance in the trade between uh, Nigeria, Nigeria and uh, Ireland. You know, but at the moment it's lopsided in the interest and benefit of uh, Irish governments, yes. Now we, uh, in a way, this summit is to create opportunities for investors to come to Nigeria and also Nigerians to do business with uh, um, Ireland. Is, is there a policy on ground in Nigeria that creates a balance for the local um, industry so that this foreign industry does not really wipe them out? Of course, of course, uh, um, Ni 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 Nigeria is, um, is, is on the move and is in progress. And may I use this opportunity to say, um, like I said, the private sector is the, is, uh, is the chief driver of this summit because you can't talk about business without talking about the private sector, the entrepreneurs and all that. Government only give them a backing, you know, policy backing to make um, business easy for them to transact. So on that note, I have consulted widely and coming on board are several ministries and uh, departments and agencies where we are having on board the Nigerian Import uh, Promotion uh, Commission. We are having on board Nigeria Export Promotion Council, the NEBSA, the Nigerian Export Processing Zone. You know, we are having their CEOs on board and they are very supportive of this. What is the essence of their coming? to also let the Irish business community and of course the government know that these are the policies that will make your business strive when you establish it in Nigeria. This is the way it is. This is what you do from the government. You have the support of the government. I'm talking about the small scale businesses. This is a cross-border um, trade and investment. Um, the, 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 the small scale businesses in Nigeria won't be swallowed up by the big investors coming in, coming on board to establish because government already have uh, policies that can, can protect. Can you give us an example of these policies? What is out there? What's on ground that is going to prevent this happening? Because for, 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 for instance, I used the example of two months ago, there was a, a launching or an unveiling of a rice pyramid in Abuja. You know, if you had followed the, the trend of events in Nigeria, there was a rice pyramid that wasn't done by an individual. It was done by these small scale businesses that you talk about these, uh, you know, farmers. They are farmers, actually. So what, do, what, what has government done? Government made policies so much so that when they produce this rice, they don't find it difficult to sell as to, you know, uh, for, the, for their return on investments to come up quickly. What has government done? Government uh, provided a forum where when these things are pro uh, produced, you bring them on board, government will help you sell them so that you get your money back and go back to farm to do more, you know. So there is that uh, uh, middle, mi mi middle, mi mi middle uh, uh, person in the person of government trying to help them. Government has provided funds for them uh, in terms of grants and loans to do their business. And when they bring these things so that it doesn't get spoiled or perish in their hands, government will also help them in the marketing of such products so as for them to get their return on investment and be able to pay back their loans you know given to them so there are such policies to help the small scale businesses to also grow what obstacles are one what bar what barriers have you seen in 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 the trade and investment between those countries that you intend to break through this summit the the barriers are well, that is why we are bringing on board uh, both governments to look at what is on paper and what we can even put on paper. You know, um, uh, in the international arena, you don't you don't always get what you what you deserve. You negotiate what you what you want. So this is a form of negotiation. You know, to really get things done the way they ought to be done. On that note, the barriers, if you ask me, can only be the border issues. So I think coming on board the government of Nigeria led by our Minister of Foreign Affairs, 
His Excellency Joseph Onyama and meeting his counterpart here. They will put things on the table and look for, you know, possible ways of making this, uh, making the policies of the uh, cross-border uh, transactions easy for our private sectors. So uh, uh, if you remove that barrier, I think every other thing will fall into shape. Uh, but, but, but is there any major, if you're looking at the, uh, pol the policies now from both sides, is there any major policy that you think you can target with this summit? That's okay, this we intend, this is, this we intend to achieve from this summit that this policy is changed or adjusted to suit the trade between us. Is there any major one? Yes, uh, you know, um, Ireland is in, uh, is in EU. Um, from what I have seen before now, you, you pass through the European Union, the organization, you know, to have anything done in, 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 in Ireland, for instance, and I, I think it's also applicable to some other EU countries. And we come up to say, no, it ought not to be. Yes, there is multilateral, uh, you know, cooperation, but much more there will be more dividend of this bilateral relation when it is narrowed down to bilateral relation rather than expanding it to multilateral relation. So to that effect, this cross-border transaction, we can have it done. We can have the agreement done between Ireland and Nigeria exclusively outside the EU policy or EU rules and regulation. So long as it doesn't violate also that of the EU, I think that we should narrow down our relation between Nigeria and Ireland and leave it at that. That is where they, you know, that is, is where that, what is we are targeting. Is, is that even possible when Ireland is a signatory in the European Union? Can you have a bilateral and, and, and trade with them only excluding the EU? We are, we are not trying to exclude the EU. There, what, what is, uh, there is also African Union, don't forget. So if there is EU, there is also African Union. So what we are saying, if we have agreed to do bilateral relation, then it should be so. There are things that EU can handle and there are things that a sovereign nation as a sovereign nation can stand to say, no, we're interested in this. And their, 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 their counterpart is also interested in it. And they go ahead and uh, you know, tidy up the MOUs to allow that thing fly for ease of uh, you know, cooperation and uh, business as we are doing now. So it doesn't mean, necessarily mean that we are trying to violate the policies and rules of the EU, no. But as a sovereign nation, they can stand to say, this will be benefit Ireland, we have seen it, and we are going all ahead of our health. They have done it with other nations. So Nigeria shouldn't be, they are doing with India, they are doing Morocco, uh, they, they, they didn't necessarily have to pass through EU to get all that done. So Nigeria is negotiating to see ways you know, of further deepening this bilateral relation instead of the, you know, conventional EU policies and all that, trying to be a barrier to the ease of doing business and cooperation between Nigeria and Ireland. Beautiful. Um, there is one major cloud hanging up on Nigeria, you know, like, you know, investors, uh, anybody coming to Nigeria, there's this, in the media everywhere, there's this cloud hanging on over the, the country, Nigeria, that if investors are coming to Nigeria, they think about safety, they think about um, um, potential issues with um, um, corruption and all the stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, how do you address through the summit such fears? Well, uh, that is why we're bringing on board uh, some of the government officials, the ministries, the departments and agencies who are also part and parcel of the government to educate because when people are not educated about a particular thing, they make several assumptions which may end up not being true. We, we, we wouldn't want to start by saying, yes, uh, we don't have ch security challenges. We do have them and every other nation have. If you, on, if you put on your television, you will hear California shooting, train this in, this, in the US and so many other places. So this issue of uh, security is a global challenge, is not peculiar to Nigeria. However, the government of Nigeria led by His Excellency Muhammad Buhari is working around the clock with our uh, security apparatus you know, to see uh, that this menace is curbed to the uh, BRS minimum. 
I think they are doing that. And but, I believe that in no distant time, we will arrive at something very positive. Because what think, is on the news is the negative one. When positive Yeah, that's what I'm coming in, man. That's what I'm coming in, man. Do you think okay. the Nigerian government, do you think the Nigerian government is doing enough in, in terms of publicity, media? Because these things are happening in France, like France, um, UK, and America and other places. Why is that not a problem? Why is that not hanging as a cloud above there? Why is it not hanging again above Nigeria? Are we doing enough of media publicity? Are we doing enough with that? To, to purify our image out there, to put a better image out. Yes, like I said, Nigeria is on the making. If you look at the people you are comparing Nigeria with, and again, don't, don't forget that Nigeria is the mirror of Africa. And these people you make mention of, they are also interested in Nigeria. So most times you discover that with all due respect to everybody that some people, some, some, some big, uh, nations may not even want peace to be in Nigeria because if Nigeria is gotten right, Africa is on the move towards greatness, okay? So what has been on the news is the negative aspect of Nigeria. That has always been what is about. And when you make mention of Nigeria, it's all about negativity. But I tell you, it is not so. Yes, we have our challenges. We are not shying away from them. We are facing them headlong to see ways of, you know, coming out of it very strong and stronger than when it even started. Okay, so the government is doing a lot in the areas of security. You may not know, not until uh, after a while, we'll see that all those things, we no longer see them in the news and they are no longer happening. Then you know that the government have been working all along you know, in that area. And uh, talking about security also, um, just last month, um, uh, Alaji Ali Kota Dangote, you know, just uh, commissioned his fertilizer company in our uh, processing zone area. It is still in the same Nigeria, and you know what that entails. And very soon, and in no distant time, he will also be commissioning the, 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 the refinery you know, he will be unveiling the refinery for it to start working. And it's also in that same Nigeria. And there have been also several other, you know, businesses thriving in Nigeria. So irrespective of the security, security challenges are not everywhere. Where they are, we know, and they are being, you know, handled by the, by the professionals in that field. So that is not a barrier to anybody coming to invest or do business in Nigeria because the necessary, um, the, the necessary uh, security is put in place to make sure that when you come in, your business will thrive, you will establish and settle in. And there are also government policies to even help those who are coming in to invest, to uh, you know, get uh, integrated into the system and thrive in their business. Um, the Nigerian entertainers, the musicians, the actors have been a great ambassador. They have really helped in the image of Nigeria out there because before, before now, Nigeria, everything about Nigeria, mostly what people think about Nigeria more negative, but because of our music and our themes, we have we are having more positive image. And the entertainment industry is all also growing really huge. It's one, it's really one of the biggest in the world today. Ma, tell us the potential opportunities for investors or the, the Nigerian entertainment industry in this summit? Okay. Uh, permit me to say that Nigerians are great people. Nigerians are doing wonderfully well wherever they are found. You know, the, like I said, what, will, what you will see in the news is always the negative about Nigeria. But as an ambassador, I've been here for 11 months plus running now. And I tell you, and I make bold to say, that we have Nigerians who are accomplished in various fields of life, okay? Not only in a, 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 a entertainment industry, we have Nigerians who are accomplished as medical doctors, businessmen, and women. We have so many ambassadors across the globe, not just in Ireland or in Nigeria. So having said that, yes, we appreciate our uh, entertainment, uh, our artists, you know, who have done us proud uh, globally. Of course, you can make mention of uh, 
you know, music, like you said, or movies now without making mention of one or two Nigerians who have gone up there, you know, to, to, to get an award. And that award is accredited to Nigeria because he's first a Nigerian because before he became or he or she became an artist. And uh, the, well, uh, the, the place they occupy in the summit, like I said, the summit is all encompassing is all encompassing, is a one-stop summit for everybody, all and sundry. Uh, there is no how we can uh, package and sell or showcase our culture, you know, to the Irish government or Irish people and those who live in Ireland without making mention of our, you know, our artists, you know. So in this, uh, in this summit, they are coming to showcase our culture and culture people to people relation. And people will be interested. People have always been interested in the in the in the in the entertainment industry of Nigeria, and uh, you can be rest assured that they will, if they come on board. Like I said, you seek ways of possible collaboration, partnership, and all that. They will find all of that in this summit because people are coming on board to see where they can invest their money. Actually, so we are making that opportunity open for all and sundry to to leverage on. To, 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 to find partnership and cooperation in those regards. Uh, are we going to see part of, uh, uh, are we going to see some element of the Nigerian entertainment industry, some entertainers, some of these uh, artists or musicians, are they going to be a part of, is going to be, are we going to be having Nigerian entertainment in this summit also? Is it going to be a part of it? Is is uh, we 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 have it in our program of event is part of it and uh, is open to all and sundry each and every one of them who wish to be part and parcel of the summit um, because uh, we we are not only selling our oil and gas we are selling our culture also don't forget that like I said and beautiful culture too so the world need to know not just Ireland the world need to know what we have in the areas of culture. So we are bringing on board, yes, our artists and uh, to showcase our culture and to also see partnership because it's also business. If you turn it around, it becomes business for people. So people can leverage on that to cash into it and uh, use it as business across border. Mm, Ma, to sum it up, if you, um, if, if one wants to um, think of it this way, what are, if I ask this question, who is it? What are you doing differently with this summit? You know, people have been um, organizing events like this, summit like this. But what are you di doing differently that is going to give us, give that produce the result you expected than whatever any other person has done before? Well, uh, what am I doing differently? What I'm doing differently, like I said, uh, when I checked the files on arrival, I discovered that. It has taken uh, not less than uh, 15 years when this was done, you know, between Nigeria and Ireland. And I further asked questions and uh, you discover that after the event, that was the beginning and the end of it. There was no, you know, follow up. There was no link, uh, you know, to these businesses that met each other and discussed. It ended that way. So. Moving forward after the event, there is a, we already have a, a program for post summit, you know, follow up on these businesses between Nigeria and Ireland uh, business community. Uh, we have a mechanism for follow up so that these things can, it, it may take six months, it, can, it may take one year, but it's an ongoing thing after the event, after the summit, to make sure that these businesses, they tidy up agreements as to begin, you know, their, their trade relation in that regard. So what I'm doing differently beyond the summit, we have put in place mechanism of follow-up, both the Irish and the Nigerian businesses for them to follow up on each other until they get things the way they want it and they begin to do business together. Nice. Um, but what are the, you know, the, the Nigerian the startup hub is really doing great. It's, it's, it's doing well. So are they, are they on board and what are the opportunities for Nigerian startups? For Nigerian startups, what they'll be needing is um, um, Irish uh, counterparts who will be bringing on board financial, so technical or financial support, you know, to expand. There, there is always room for expansion. 
there is always room for growth. Uh, you started small today does not mean you continue small and you end small. So beginning small is just the beginning of it. So coming on board is to also look for partners who can you know work with them to expand the business uh, in technical terms or financial terms. So there, there is room for everybody in this summit, like I said. And uh, so there are people who are looking for where to invest their money in potential things to invest their money in. So those, those, those will be taken care of also in the events. Nice. Mm. And now let's talk about we that are here, the diasporans. Mm. <laughs> How do we key into the events? You know, are, Nigerians are spread all over Europe here. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you intend to have people, uh, do you, do you uh, intend to have Nigerians from all over Europe coming? And how do we key in? How do we be a part of it? Yes, uh, we, if, if, you, if, you, if you check our website, you, 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 you could see, you can see for yourself that we are carrying everybody along. You know, uh, uh, yes, it's happening in Ireland, but that does not debate anybody or whether you are a Nigerian in diaspora or any other foreigner, you know, or, uh, of any other national from participating in the summit because it's all about Nigeria now. And if we find potential investors, you know, who, who leverage on this and probably are from Switzerland or Germany to, you know, to say, okay, you are ready to do business in Nigeria. Why not? We'll give it a trial and see how it goes. So talking about our diaspora uh, community, you know, across Europe and beyond is, uh, is also an opportunity for them to cash into. For those of them who are interested in business, they can also find partners from where they reside and decide to, you know, bring on board to this summit. And uh, they can find partners who came from Nigeria and there it goes. So they also have the same or equal opportunity every other person attending the summit has. They have that. Finally, in one word, mm. tell us, or our audience out there, or anybody who is curious about this whole summit, in one word, why they should come to this summit? In the simple why, sentence. Why they should come? Uh, you, you know, life evolves and um, uh, everybody craves for growth, you know, holistically. So it's an opportunity for people to not just uh, the trade and investment, because there, there have been so much that is said about Nigeria, what it stands for, what is in it in Nigeria, what about Nigeria and all that. So we are bringing what is in it for us, who we are. And some of the news that go out there may not be really the, the, the truth of the matter, because when people are not well informed, they make several assumptions. So we are bringing on board Nigerians who will come and tell them, this is the way it is, this is the way. And beyond telling the story about us, it's also a business summit. So everybody crave to grow, everybody crave to expand his or her, you know, her, 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 her areas of uh, endeavor, you know, to look for area, uh, new areas of investment and opportunity. So that is what is in it. So we are putting it on the table for grabs. And then uh, would this summit be uh, beamed live on the social media somewhere, or is there, is, is there going to be a link to this social media? We, we, on we, social media, we, I mean. Yes, uh, it will be recorded that I can assure you the, 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 the whole event will be recorded. Uh, some other persons have suggested that we also stream it live. So we are also considering that. And uh, when we come up with a, a decisive decision, we'll put it on our website for people to you know, be aware of it. And of course, the link to join with. We are, we are considering that. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been speaking with Her Excellency, the Ambassador of Nigeria to Ireland, Mrs. Obiezi Joma Chinongirem. She has enlightened us about the upcoming event, a summit that is going to take place, the Nigerian um, Ireland Trade and Investment Summit, which is coming up on the 30th June to the 2nd of July in Ireland. Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Obiezi Ijo Machi, the ambassador of Nigeria to Ireland. I want to say thank you very, very much 
very, very much, Ma. For giving me your time, it has been a wonderful time. You have enlightened us. You have learned a lot from this discourse. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs>